Hi, I'm Ryan Levin with the Levin Family Foundation, and I'm here with my family and co-trustees, my Uncle Alan, my mother Karen, and my father Louis. And here in the next third, what is it, 180 seconds, I'm going to give a 70-year history of my family's involvement in film. Some of you may remember some of the good names, the, the old Contiki, the Captain Kid, the Sherwood Twin, the Dixie Drive-In, and it's noteworthy to say that the Dixie Drive-In Theater is still alive, around, and showing four great movies each evening. My father, and my uncle, and my mother raised me in an environment around films. He always saw the movie posters, heard about what was playing, what was coming. Most importantly, took me to the theaters at night where I got to enjoy the sights, the sounds, the spectacle of the movie theater and see how, uh, how the sausage was made, as it were, behind the scenes, to see the film whirling about upon reels and through the projectors and back to catch-up reels. And it was uh, a great movie lifetime experience growing up in that kind of environment. Uh, most kids wouldn't get that experience and uh, I really enjoyed it and that, that is why I think uh, my family inspired me uh, to continue the legacy, to keep the torch alive with our last drive-in theater, our last theater at all, the Dixie Drive-In Theater. And uh, in addition to that, my family has inspired me with our support of the Take Us Home video. It all started in 1946 when we built the uh, Sherwood Drive-In Theater. Later on it became the Sherwood Twin and from there we uh, built or bought theaters in uh, Springfield, Ohio and in uh, Columbus, Chicago and also Cincinnati we developed uh, 17 theaters. The thing that inspired Sam to do this movie was the fact that pictures like that were doing gangbusters business. And uh, we thought, why not make a movie and uh, make a lot of money off of, that, off of it? The background of the story was involved around the Beatles, and, uh, and that was his idea. He wrote the, uh, wrote the play, wrote the film, and uh, Sam, as you might expect, was a very smart guy. I was uh, lucky enough to be a judge in the beauty contest that was in the film. And uh, that wasn't too hard to take. <laughs> well, Sam was a judge, too. Well, that's yeah. right. Sam was a judge, too. And so was the fun eight days. Hey, Lou keeps telling me that I started it. I keep saying that he started it. I think I'm more accurate. <laughs> I, I called up Bob Adventures to get it started, but it was your idea to start the operation. Pittsburgh operator told us that he was filling up his entire theater with free market vendors on a Sunday, and that's what inspired us to get started ourselves, and eventually all of our drive-in theaters had flea markets. After a time, they were more successful than, than the movies. Doing the movie Take Us Home was one of the most interesting and gratifying experiences. Um, it's a takeoff of doing due diligence for the foundation because originally it, it's that's how the whole thing got started is by doing due diligence over in Gondar, Ethiopia for a project we were going to fund. And when I was there, the different stories I heard and the sites I saw, it, it, I wanted to know more and I came back and tried to you know, read books and everything and it was always from the perspective of the people who were white. It was not from the perspective of the Ethiopians who were actually going through this. You were, there's always trade-offs and even though you go to a place that's a lot better than you were before, there are always those you leave behind. I think it's a, a movie that's applicable to anyone who has family members who's immigrated and it also gives you a very interesting perspective about a story that most people don't know anything about concerning the Ethiopian Jews and their immigration into Israel. All I knew was is that there were Ethiopian Jews and I read everything I could read but we didn't know what the story was. I tell stories that are based on human beings, they're very personal 
and we went over and then we met families and when we picked out the families that we thought we wanted to follow over a period we did and we went back every time something happened in their lives and that becomes a very expensive documentary mm -hmm. and that's before you begin editing and post-production or any of that and uh, the Levin Family Foundation and Karen Levin especially made it all happen and it wouldn't happen without them there's just no way